No! Why wasn't I there? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your Daily Dose guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's time for that weekly mod collection demo shop update. Starting off with this very interesting Grove finish. This is one of those upscale versions of the DC specials that, unfortunately, I have not documented yet, but I kind of like this one. The fact that they left it pick guardless, except for our tenon cover, then you've got the cream color plastics, and then kind of a dirty yellow flame top with amored out knobs and tip. It's interesting. The face of the headstock, they made it extra plain and gave it some unique tuners. Open back ones, you usually only see those on acoustics. With a demo shop style cereal. And then, ah, interesting, it's just a natural satin back. Usually those are painted, so that's kind of a unique offering. Although definitely at a premium for 4800 You tell me, which one do you think looks better? I'd probably stick with the blue. Now we've got Disco Green Burst breaking in. It's a green satin widow. I think it looks cool, but if you don't like green guitars, it might not be your style. The main difference this time being the knurled metal knobs. And ah, cool fancy electronics. Interesting pickup choice, Burst Bucker 61R and 498T Bridge. But of course it's got the matching headstock. But they put the Schaller tuners on it this time. And that's the legit Schaller tuners, not the hidden Grovers. Even branded as such, but our mod stamp went a little crazy with the finish right there. But it is a 2023 serial. And just like the top, the back is also bursted, same as the edges. I don't know how I feel about the back plate they chose, but hey, it's what it is. But I'm kind of curious, wh where does the disco come from? Maybe it's slightly sparkly in person. But this thing's eye-catching, Warren Aqua CS356. Looks like one of those smaller body semi-hollow style guitars, but with the nice light blue finish and the white plastics, makes it different from what you normally see. But this one's got all the fancy custom attributes to it with the mother of pearl block inlays on the headstock and the logo, super multiply binding, threw a white truss rod cover on there to match, and you got the mother of pearl block inlays on the ebony fretboard. But then interestingly enough, you swap it over to the back, you can see that natural mahogany. And another DS style serial. We're almost getting to number 100. And cool, sometimes the ES style guitars don't sell too quickly, but that one found a home at 46. Now, here we go Les Paul Supreme Icy Indigo 4500. Whoa, that's a nice top. It almost came out a bit too dark, so let's adjust the lighting here a little bit so you can see through it. That is fantastic and great if you like dark blues. However, wait till you get to the headstock. They changed things up this time. Instead of coloring the Gibson logo and our new little Supreme thing and sometimes the binding, they just did the inlays here. Let me know how you feel about it. Personally, I think it looks like a giant clown nose and I absolutely absolutely hate it. But at least they're trying new things. Here's another idea for your mod collection, guys. Make a rainbow influenced guitar and make these like different colors rainbow like. I think that'd be interesting. Or like an RGB theme one. There was a store that ordered like a pinkish one. So I think that's where the mod collection guys got that idea from. But you flip it over to the back, you can see some nice natural mahogany. That's a pretty tricky two piece back. It almost looks like one piece. But if you wanted it lighter, there was cool Lagoon Burst for 2800. Kind of reminds me of like a Epiphone finish. It's a very light sky bursty vibe. Looks like you've got kind of a more whitish silver border around it before you get to your big blue. Our headstock was not messed with, but interesting contrast with a super dark back. But now Tiger Lily for 3100. It's an ES339, so think 335, but slightly shrunken down, kind of like a Les Paul, and kind of a nice rockabilly orange flavor with the small block inlays. And a back to match, but a natural mahogany look for the neck. But let's take a closer look at Ebony Space Sparkle. For 3100, adjust the color. It's just kind of a lightly sparkly black. Kind of what the name was telling ya. But whoa, I'm assuming the back also got that treatment or it might be a very dark blue, but what is going on here? Well, we can confirm the sparkliness, but my goodness, if you bought this, please save these photos because that's gonna weird someone out if you ever have to sell it. I don't think we've ever seen it exactly like that. It's great that they re-stamped the serial number when it's hard to read, but I thought that was the whole point of the DS style serial numbers if they needed to re-serialize something. But now we've got Champagne Nights for 32. A nice golden champagne, lots of glitter and sparkles in there. That's gonna look good in person. But then black plastics. I feel like this one would pull off cream plastics a little bit better. But hey, we've got a champagne stinger on this one. So that's something to look forward to. 
And keeping with the theme, we've got Dry Martini Burst. Cool little olive looking guitar. Oh man, that's a cool idea. Mod collection guys, make an olive guitar. Have it just be a middle pickup only Les Paul that has like the red bobbins on it and the rest is kind of like green, like you're looking down at olive. Maybe make it just a bridge pickup one because that would actually be in the center and it would probably find a buyer better. But look at that, you've got the notched speed knobs. That was like a 2014 Gibson shortly lived thing. And you're getting the new 57 classic double whites. But hey, this one also gets an ebony stinger with a natural back. I like that one. And lastly, Persimmon Magic Satin. It's a Les Paul special for 2300. I feel like this would go really good with a sports team that is incorporated into orange. But to spice it up a little bit, they have the chrome P90 covers. It's just hard to see and the clear knobs. Kind of shocked not to see a matching headstock. But we do have a complete refinished back with brown back plates this time. And then as far as the UK mod collection this week, they had a blue raspberry fade satin 60s figure top. So it looks like this started life as blueberry burst, but then got slightly sprayed more blue. But sure enough, the back is still blue. Then they had twinkle top. Kind of looks like it would match with some of those other sparkly drinks. Although I'd say this one's a little bit more tame and very classy. And an odd choice, but I think it actually works well to have the red back. You tell me, do you think those colors jive? Kind of reminds me of Ohio State football, so I think a lot of people will say yes. Then they had Burst Syrup on this SG standard. There's natural Burst SGs out there that look very similar to this, so it's nothing super new, but this one being a satin finish, I don't know, it looks strikingly good, especially since we've got the witch hat style knobs. But now the big question, is it on the back? Yes, it is, so that puts it a step above what we've seen before. That one's actually not too bad. Sticking on that side of the world. European shop, nothing. London shop, nothing. I've been saying they've been taking the weeks off probably to focus on the Gibson garage. Let's give them another two or three weeks to get back up to where they need to be before we say anything for certain. But now the Gibson USA demo shop. I wish I would have checked on Thursday. But I actually did buy something out of the demo shop this week. On Tuesday, they dropped only five guitars and they were all Epiphones. What Epiphones were they? Matt Hafey's signature prototype guitars. So these have already been released, but they had three of the white ones and two of the ebony. Now I saw this about 30 minutes after launch. One of the ebony's had already sold. And I was thinking, I wonder how many of these prototypes are out there. Are they going to continue to dump more and more and more? So it's kind of like a calculated risk. And on top of that, I had to figure out what actually makes this different from the production. Because that's what makes prototypes valuable and kind of collectible and cool and fun to document is when they are different from production. So after doing a little bit of comparison, I said, oh, yes, I bought this one. We'll see an Ebony reviewed in the next week or so whenever they decide to ship it. The whites were cool, but my camera just does not like white guitars. <laughs> So Tuesday was a happy day. Thursday was a very, very, very upsetting day. Look what was there. One of the really, really rare, super instantly sold out Alien Tech Green Dave Mustaines. It's definitely one of my favorite ones that they've released. If I remember correctly, it was like a limited edition of 200. And brand new, they were three grand, so just a little bit more expensive than the baseline model. You don't see people asking less than four grand. And usually it's like the six to eight K. Now, do they actually sell? I don't know. But I think it's safe to say there's at least a thousand dollar premium onto these. So to have been able to pick one up for $500 off just because they had to mess around with a nut, I missed my opportunity to document it. Even if I'm not the biggest fan of the Dave Mustaine specs on these guitars, I love the cool little inlays on this. I mean, we did review the Kramer version and that's kind of close. And in many ways, even cooler. I love the Kramer body shape style that they used on those. But that was a bit of a gut punch. Then there was also a pretty good deal on one of the Rick Beato double cuts for 1500. That's $500 off. But in case you missed it, the red ones have stayed in production, unlike the blues. This was another one of those screaming deals. The 80s Explorer in the classic white finish. Thankfully, we do have new guitar days scheduled. So when the come in stock next we will get to see not one but two on the show but this was an opportunity for an early bird to get 300 bucks off but as far as other interesting things there was this one that i was unsure if it was a custom color or if it was just a typo they call it ebony aged cherry twice so maybe it's like a really dark ox blood or maybe they sprayed a trans black over cherry like you can kind of see some of it but it was interesting 
They had a double neck, but I just left that in here to talk about the Jimmy Page one that's coming. I don't know if we'll see that as like another 50k come visit the London garage type thing that they did with the greenie, but now that I've said it, it kind of does feel right. Not because everybody wants that double neck in their collection, but meeting Jimmy Page, that that's pretty cool. Then check out this cool honey ambered 60s figure top. I mean, 2400 bucks, that's like 600 off. I thought that was a pretty nice top. Okay, back. And then lastly, this thing sold surprisingly fast. It was a Les Paul Classic and just a trans cherry finish. 1600 it's an okay price. But I'm curious why it sold. Is it because the nice lava lamp-like wood grain? It's very unique. I'm sure it wouldn't be most people's first choice, but when I buy a guitar for myself, I like them to have unique grain like this. And hey, nice tight wood grain on the back. All right, that's all the fun for this week. Do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.